The Boeing Starliner is, after experiencing thruster problems, cannot safely, they cannot put trust to safely bring those two astronauts back. Therefore, they will go to Elon Musk's Dragon SpaceX capsule, which doesn't launch until late September and not scheduled to return until February. NASA has decided that Butch and Sonny will return with Crew-9 next February. Uh, and that Starliner uh, will return uncrewed, and the specifics in the schedule will be discussed momentarily. This whole discussion, remember, is put in the context of we have had mistakes done in the past. We lost two space shuttles as a result of there not being a, a culture in which information could come forward. Uh, we have been very solicitous of all of our employees that if you have some objection, you come forward. Space flight is risky, even at its safety, safest and even at its most routine. And a test flight by nature is neither safe nor routine. And so the decision to keep Butch and Sonny aboard the International Space Station and bring the Boeing Starliner home uncrewed is a result of a commitment to safety. Our core value is safety and it is our North Star. NASA has decided that Butch and Sonny will return with Crew-9 next February uh, and that Starliner uh, will return uncrewed. This whole discussion, remember, is put in the context of we have had mistakes done in the past. We lost two space shuttles as a result of there not being a, a culture in which information could come forward. Space flight is risky, even at its safety, safest and even at its most routine. And a test flight by nature is neither safe nor routine. And so the decision to keep Butch and Sonny aboard the International Space Station and bring the Boeing Starliner home uncrewed is a result of a commitment to safety. A real blow to Boeing that has suffered its own woes with the 737s and, and the like, as well as uh, NASA's reputation at stake. Of course, NASA and Boeing were doing the Starliner. They're now having to call Elon Musk to save the day. The, the bottom line relative to bringing Starliner back is it was just there was just too much uncertainty in the prediction of the thrusters. If we had a model, if we had a way to accurately predict uh, what the thrusters would do for the undock and all the way through the deorbit burn and through the separation sequence, I think we would have taken a different course of action. But when we looked at the data and looked at the potential for thruster failures with a crew on board uh, and then getting into this very tight sequence of finishing the deorbit burn, which puts the vehicle on an entry, and then immediately uh, maneuvering from that into a SEP sequence to separate the service module and crew module, it was just too much risk with the crew, and so we decided to pursue the uncrewed uh, test <clears throat> um, The path forward now is to, as Ken said, work toward the flight readiness review part two. Well, we review now. We know the scope of the mission. We know it's an uncrewed test flight. Uh, we are changing the separation sequence that we planned, and we will review those aspects at the readiness review. We're going to go with a simplified uh, separation technique to get away from station a little more quickly. Um, we'll get to the deorbit burn and execute that nominally. Uh, we have a good setup in terms of the opportunities uh, into the White Sands Space Harbor for a number of opportunities in September. 
Um, we'll, we'll land or undock in early September, and then we have a lot of work to do uh, relative to the, the rest of the mission, which is Bush and Sonny stay on the space station for some time, and they return on Crew-9. We're configuring that spacecraft with a couple extra, uh, a, two different seats, so we'll have two different crew members, uh, two crew members on that vehicle, and then we'll have it ready to bring Butch and Sunny home. So they'll be ballast in two seats on the uphill. Um, we also have to work to reconfigure the, the Crew-8 vehicle. When Starliner undocks, it will undock first, and then the Crew-8 vehicle will serve as the lifeboat for Butch and Sunny. We have a configuration on the cargo pallet we will go put in place. A real blow to Boeing that has suffered its own woes with the 737s and, and the like, as well as uh, NASA's reputation at stake. Of course, NASA and Boeing were doing the Starliner. They're now having to call Elon Musk to save the day and they realized this was just too risky. So this was a trip that started out as eight days. It has now become eight months. And we heard one of the officials there at NASA saying that, you know, normally, uh, normal expeditions can go up to six months and then some will go up to 12 months. So this eight months still falls within the window that they're used to. It's not outside of it. However, Griff, this is not news anyone wanted to hear, especially their families who have been waiting. And now we have two NASA astronauts who continue to be stuck in space. This is, by all accounts, uh, a catastrophic failure for Boeing in their reputation. And now, with Elon Musk SpaceX coming to the rescue and fortunately trying to get those astronauts back safely, that is, of course, the paramount top concern in this situation. But going forward, I think there are a lot of questions for NASA, but even more so pointedly at Boeing, uh, the Dragon SpaceX mission will have to go two fewer astronauts instead of four. They'll just be able to send two this time to the space station to make room to bring Sonny Williams and Butch Wilmore back because of the failure. And that's what they call it, a failure of Boeing and NASA.